Okay. Good morning, students. So, in the yesterday's class, we deal with some numericals based on the paper version of the Raoult's law and Bruce's law. Okay. In today's class, I'm going to discuss about the another important properties that is curly gap tube. properties of solutions that is qualitative properties of solutions so what is this qualitative property means so reason this is the property and the properties which depends on the properties which depends on the number of solute particles but and independent of their nature to the the properties is depends on the number of solute particles and independent of the nature to the total number of particles in the solution. So this is called as one. The qualitative properties. The properties which depends only on the number of solid particles. It never depends on the nature of the particles, whether it's solid, liquid, gas, or volatile, or non-volatile. That is called as qualitative properties. In that qualitative properties, four qualitative properties are there. One is relative. Lowering of vapor pressure. Relative lowering of vapor pressure. Another one is elevation in boiling point. Next. Depression in basing point. Next one, osmotic pressure. So students here, what are polygonal properties? As I told you, they depends on the number of the solute particles and independent of their nature. So before what I explained about the properties such as pressure, temperature in there, we are going to consider a non-volatile liquid, a non-volatile solute, a volatile liquid and a volatile solute like that. But here, it never depends upon the nature. It depends on from what? The number of particles means the quantity of solute particles which present in what? Solution. So here, in the four types, different properties are there. That is relative lowering of vapor pressure. Elevation and boiling point, depression and freezing point are the osmotic pressure. Why it is these properties? They are compared with what? The properties of the pure solvent. For example, relative lowering of vapor pressure test. You know, vapor pressure of a pure solvent is, I assume it may be 100%. Okay, listen. As I told you, here two solvents are there. Here, solvent molecules are there. It is a pure solvent. Then the vapor pressure of this pure solvent is high. Okay. Next, assume this. Same solvent molecules are there. Along with the solutes also present. The surface of the solution. If along with that, solvent are also there, solvent molecules, solute molecules are there, then what happens to the vapor pressure? Decreases because number of vapors, uh, the number of vapors 
exempted or evolved from this is very less compared to this pure solvent. So here in this type what happens students? So this type of comparison pure solvent with the solution. Here pressure is more, here pressure is less. So the comparing the relative lowering of the vapor pressure is the one of the type of the property. This is not depend upon the volatility of the nature or the volatile nature of the solute. It is because of the quantity of the solute particle. For example, here zero solute particles are there. Here one, two, three, four, five are there. If five are there, the vapor pressure decreases. If zero is there, then vapor pressure increases. That depends upon what number of solute particles, not nature of solute particles. Next, similarly, elevation in boiling point. Elevation means increase. So if Okay, when well, I am explaining boiling point, I will explain what is boiling point, how we have to calculate what is the elevation. Okay, so for pure solvent and uh, in this solvent, if you take means pure solution, not a solution, then pure solvent boils a boils a less temperature compared to the solution. Okay, next depression point means the solution freezes at a high point compared to pure solvent. Means solution freezes hardly as compared to the pure solvent. The next one is osmotic pressure that is depending upon the movement of the solute particles from the lower concentration, higher concentration to the lower concentration. So these are all about colligative properties and this is important for the mass. The mass what are colligative properties and mention how many colligative properties are there. Okay. So what are colligative properties and name them. Like that, the mass this is very important for Thomas. That's why I repeat it on the board students. Okay, we will discuss one by one. That first one is relative lowering of vapor pressure. Okay, so the collective property first one is Vapor pressure of pure solvent and vapor pressure of solution, which consists of a volatile or a non volatile solute. So, students, here what happens? Relative lowering of vapor pressure is there, vapor pressure of pure solvent is there, vapor pressure of a solution is there. Here, what we are going to see is so, listen. So when pure solvent is there, to that if we add a solute particle, the vapor pressure decreases. By taking this one as a reference, so we have to calculate that elevation for this vapor pressure. Or a relative lowering of vapor pressure. So that is delta P. Delta P. Okay, so here are you going to take P1 because P is solvent. You assume this one is P1 naught, this one is P1. Okay, so then this is vapor pressure of a pure solvent, this is vapor pressure of a solution. So this can be explained by what? Raoul's law. This vapor pressure of the solute in the solvent is explained by Raoul's law. So that shape that says what? P1 is equal to X1 into P1 naught. Correct? So this is what the Raoul's law for the component 1 you are seeing. So listen students, here P1 is there, X1 is there, P1 naught is there. So we have to check what? Delta P. What is delta P? Change in pressure of solution okay. 
with respect to pure solvent. So as I told you, the pure solvent pressure is more when the solute is added to the solvent and the pressure decreases. Therefore, delta P is equal to P1 R minus 1. Okay. So here we have P1 naught. So here P1 means what? X1 P1 naught. So we we got P1 naught is equal to 1 minus X1. So we know that students X1 plus X2 is equal to 1. So X2 is equal to 1 minus X1. We can replace this by delta P is equal to P1 naught X2. Okay, that it depends upon what? Number of moles of solute particles. So then, this is what? Assume this is equation 1. We arrange equation 1. So then what happens? Delta divided by P1 naught is equal to what? X2. What is this delta P? P1 naught minus P1. So this is P1 naught minus P1 divided by P1 naught is equal to X2. So X2 means what students? Mole fraction of subdued. To the solvent you mentioned. How do we have to calculate mole fraction now? Component X2. Then X2 is equal to 1. N of 2 divided by N of 1. N of 1 plus N of 2. You know N of 1 plus N of 2 plus N of 1 means we can take this up, or this is neglected means we will take approximately n of 2 by n of 1. So number of moles means what? Number of moles is equal to given weight divided by molecular mass. Given mass divided by molecular mass. So x2 is equal to w2 by m2 divided by w1 by m1. If you write it again, students, we will get so this P1 naught minus P1 assume this is equation 2. So substitute x2 value in equation 2 we will get by P1 naught is equal to W2 by M2 is there, W1 by M1 is there. Then if it goes up, it will be like this W1 into M2. This is the equation that shows what? Delta P value. That shows what? The depression in what? So the low, relative lowering of paper pressure. Relative lowering means this is the this lowering of paper pressure with respect to this one. Pure solvent is equal to what? The number of moles of solute. Not on the here we are taking W2M1, W1M2. So this is, this gives what? Number of moles or quantity of solute present in the solution. Okay. So this gives the equation, the relative lowering of vapor pressure strength. What we are going to start to consider here? So listen, relative with respect to what? Q solvent. Lowering of what? Vapor pressure. So Q solvent is having high vapor pressure. If we had a solute, then the lower vapor pressure decreases. So, Raoult's law, we have going to consider this Raoult's law that is P1 is equal to X1, P1. So, here what happened? Delta P is the change in the pressure of solution with respect to Q solvent. Here, Q solvent is greater in vapor pressure, means we have to mind, subtract the value of this P1 here. Delta P is equal to P1 naught minus P1, that is equal to P1 naught minus x1 p per one. From here, we substitute the value here. Okay. So, if we get this, if we take common p1 naught, we will get 1 minus x1. So, 1 minus x1 nothing but 
this x2 that is mole fraction of the component 2 so here what happens delta p is equal to p1 not x2 by modifying this equation rearranging the equation we can get things once we got this we will get the x2 value x2 value is number of moles of solute or one component with respect to the total number of total number of moles of both the components but here n2 is neglected as I told you the before problem solving condition so it is is n2 by n1 so the number of moles is nothing but p1 mass by molecular mass so x2 is equal to w2 by m2 divided by w1 by m1 so here p1 naught minus p1 divided by p1 naught is equal to what? w2 into m1 divided by w1 into m2 so this is very 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 important for problems so students the problem based on these qualitative properties is important for remarks very very important for remarks this one and next the elevation point increment and depression and decimal point and also output equation the problems based on these formulas are very very important okay so next we will discuss with depression in freezing point so listen and depression in freezing point elevation in boiling point we discuss Second quantitative property that is elevation in boiling point. So in this elevation in boiling point students, we I write first a graph with respect to vapor pressure and the temperature. Here it is. Vapor pressure. This one is temperature. So, students, here if you take this is one graph. Assume this is the vapor pressure or P1 or something you may get. Okay, next we will consider this. So students, this is the curve of solution. This is the curve of vapor pressure versus temperature of pure carbonate. So here what happens? This is the two curves which shows your vapor pressure is same. Correct? So what is the boiling point? First I will say how, at what temperature the boiling point? Are the liquid boils when vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure that is one point zero one two atm. So when the vapor pressure of the liquid or the solution is equal to what? Atmospheric pressure, then only the liquid starts boils and liquid or solution start boils. But so students, as I told you, pure solute means only solvent is there. Solute means in that one solute, either it is a non-volatile or a volatile solute is prepared. I'm sorry, added. So as I told you, this is a pure solvent, assume this one is water. 
here only water molecules are there. So in this water molecule, if we apply 160 degrees Celsius, that is enough to 60 degree. For pure solvent, it is 100 degree Celsius. Okay. If you take this is salt water. Okay, students. Here in salt water also molecules are there, but along with that, what solute? Molecules dissolved in that minerals are there, everything are there with this solvent molecules. Okay, so this is 100 degrees Celsius. The pure water, distilled water, is boils at what? 100 degrees Celsius. Then what happens? Vapor pressure of pure water is equal to 1 atmosphere at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this will boil at 60 degrees Celsius. The normal water is what? 60 degrees Celsius due to the presence of what? This minerals. What is So this is 100 degrees, this is 60 degrees. What happens to the temperature? The temperature decreases. The vapor pressure decreases. So vapor pressure decreases means we require what? Less degree to heat this. Sorry, less temperature to boil the liquid. So students, once, what is this relative lowering of vapor pressure as I told you? Elevation in boiling point is the change in the, so this boiling point is represented by delta Tb, elevation in boiling point. Okay, so Tb0 is the boiling point of the pure liquid, Tb is the boiling point of the solution. So here the changes takes place. Okay, so this is, we have to so vapor pressure of a solution or a salt water is, is equal to 1 atmosphere on an around 60 degree stage here. So this is, so this shows what elevation in water. Here the vapor pressure increases. At the same time here normal of liquid is there, the vapor pressure Vapor pressure decreases means, so attain the vapor pressure of this. So listen here, it already boils here. To attain the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, because we are coming with what? Pure solvent, then the temperature gets increases. Listen, this is increasing temperature. So pure water, liquid boils at this temperature, solution boils at this temperature. So this is compared with what? The standard value of the boiling point of the solution. So students here, if this is Tb0, if this is Tb, then this is delta Tb. The change in the temperature is called as what? Delta Tb. So this is solvent, this is Solution. So vapor pressure decreases means the results in what? We have to rise the temperature to increase the vapor pressure of the solute to attain this one atmospheric pressure. As I told you, to attain one atmospheric pressure, we need to rise the temperature. If the temperature increases, the number of formation of vapors increases. If the vapors formula increases, then what? It forms a more vapor pressure. So this is what? Elevation in boiling point. So this elevation in boiling point is also a colligative property. So it follows the derivation of the here. Elevation in boiling point. Okay. So students, here delta Tb we may consider. So this delta Tb is equal to Tb0 minus Tb is called as this one elevation in boiling point. This graph is very, very, very important for 2 mark. This graph is very, very important for 2 So, students, here what we are going to check is so listen, here the increase in this temperature depends on what? Amount of solute present in the solvent. Okay, so that is delta Tb is 
is directly proportional to molar concentration. Molarity, not molarity, directly proportional to what? Molarity. So, to so remove the proportionality, we will take KB M. Okay, so I write the terms later. Here, what is this KB students? So, delta KB means KB naught minus KB. This molarity means what? Number of moles of solute present in 1 kg of the sample. So, the number of moles of solute you may take that is N2 divided by N1 you may take. M is equal to N2 divided by M1. Okay, so N2 means W2 divided by M2. This one W1 divided by this is solvent means M2. So I take. So molarity means what students? It is the number of moles of solute present in 1 kg of solvent. Therefore, this is W2 by M2 divided by W1 by 1000. So substitute this value here. Delta Tb is equal to Kb into W2 into 1000 divided by W1 into M2. So this is the formula to calculate delta Tb. So if you want molecular mass, M2 is equal to Kb into W2 into 1000 divided by W1 into Delta EV. So, this is the very, very important formula. Okay, students, here, what is this KV means? So, KV means this is molar, molar elevation constant. R, R, ebliosopic, ebliosopic, constant, R, elevation, in boiling point constant. Okay, so M2 is molecular mass of solute W2 weight of solute W1 weight of solvent and delta Pb is changing temperature or a change in boiling point movement. So this is the Kb that is ebliosophic constant, molar elevation constant or a elevation in boiling point constant. So here this Kb depends on what students? So this Kb is the common Kb is the common solvents are given in the table that's a 2.3 so in NCRD you see the table number 2.3 in that we can easily see what is the change in the ebliopopic constant the ebliopopic constant is what is directly proportional to this change in or elevation in boiling point okay that is very very important what is Kb called as in the conjugative properties and in the elevation in boiling point. Okay, this Kb, importance of Kb and the significance of Kb is important. So, what is that Kb says? As I told you, delta Kb is directly proportional to molar concentration. Okay, in that molar concentration, some constant we are going to take students because here there is a somewhat change in this molar concentration. Okay, the weight is there, mass is there, so the delta Kb change into is equal to this Kb into M. In some amount, this Kb shows what? 
the value which depends upon this delta T B. Means it is multiplied by M means this T B is dependent upon what? Ebullioscopic constant. This tells about the elevation in the boiling point that is the significance of this K B. Okay, students, I'll explain once again. Elevation in boiling point means the increase in the temperature to increase the boiling point of the solution with compared to solvent. In that is called as delta T B. This is the graph that shows the elevation in boiling point. This is vapor pressure versus temperature. If you draw, pure solvent melts at lower temperature and solution boils at did not melt. Pure solvent boils at lower temperature and the solution boils at higher temperature. For example, water is there. So for that water, its the vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure at 100 degrees Celsius. If we had Sudden to that means the vapor pressure decreases. As I told you, the pure water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, the salt water boils at 60 degrees Celsius. So that results in what the boiling point of the water decreases due to the presence of the solute. So to increase that to 100 degrees Celsius, we have to obtain some amount of extra temperature. Okay. So due to the addition of that extra temperature, so, there is a change in the difference between the temperature of the liquids which we are going to boil the pure solvent as well as the solution. Okay. So, here students, by using this, so this is delta T B naught, that is the temperature at which the solvent boils. This is delta T B, the, the temperature at which solution boils. So, this is delta T B naught, the change in the temperature of pure solvent and the solution that is called as elevation in boiling point. Okay. Next, that is increase. Elevation means increase. Next, delta T B is equal to delta T B naught minus T B. Delta T B is directly proportional to what? Molar concentration. How many moles of solute present in one kg of solvent? So delta T B is equal to KB into M. This is N2 by N1. So this is the answer W2 by M1. M2 divided by W1 by 1000. Why we are taking 1000? Because molarity means it is number of moles of solute to the 1 kg of the solvent. Okay. Next, delta T B is equal to KB into, if we substitute this value here, we will get delta T B is equal to KB into W2 into 1000 divided by W1 into M2. So M2 is equal to KB into W2 into 1000 divided by W1 into delta T B. So these are the terms what we are called in this solution, this equation. Okay. So this is all about elevation of the boiling point. So in that the question they may ask for one more students why the sea water boils hardly compared to the pure water or why the sea water boils at lower temperature because because of the presence of the solute it decreases vapor pressure so that results in the decrease in the temperature to boil the solution okay this is very very important reasoning question most of all they can ask from these concepts. So the next one is third one that is depression in freezing point. Depression in freezing point. So again I draw the graph. This is vapor pressure. This is vapor pressure. So students, here the graph takes
which is solvent okay so this one is solution okay here we consider what temperature from here and this is one temperature here we get the color like this okay. so this is frozen This is what frozen solvent. If this is TF not, this is TF, then this is delta TF. If this is TF not, this is TF, then this is delta TF not. So here we are taking what students decreasing temperature here for pure solvent. Freezing point is more. Here for solution, freezing point is less because the reason this is 100, 0 degrees Celsius or 0 degree, 4 degree, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 degrees centigrade. Just as you have to an assumption. If pure solvent is freezes at 3 degrees Celsius, then this solution freezes at 1 degree Celsius. There is a decrease in what? Depression, decrease in the freezing point temperature. So decrease means that is depression. Increase means that is elevation. So here the solution freezes earlier compared to solvent. Why? What is the reason? As I told you, if we consider distilled water as well as salt water, distilled water freezes late, it takes more time to freeze, and that uh, salt water freezes early. Because students, in the salt water, salute are also there, solvent is also there. The freezes, one which freezes is that is solvent. We are comparing the freezing point with respect to what? Solvent. So, in that freezing point in the salt water, so many minerals are there, then also only the solvent can freeze. We are considering the freezing point of the solvent only. So, the salt water that freezes readily compared to, so it freezes very fast compared to solvent. Why? Because it is there because of the presence of the solute particle decreases what? The solvent particles. If the solvent particles are less, they take less time to freeze at the certain temperature. Okay, so this is depression in freezing point. So here also nothing will change students. Directly I will take this is represented by delta T F. So delta T F is equal to T F minus T F. T F naught minus Tf. Okay, Tf not minus Tf. So here, what you are going to do is again this delta Tf is also is directly proportional to what? In. To remove it proportionally constant, constant, we have to take this one as Kf. That is equal to F. So in the last only I derived what is M W2 into 1000 divided by W1 into M2. So this is from the last equation or a volatility if you obtain it, so you get the same thing. So delta Tf is equal to Kf into W2 into 1000 divided by W1 into M2. If you want to calculate M2, then this is Kf into W2 into 1000 divided by W1 into M2. This is Kf into W2 into 1000 divided by W1 into 
into m2 w1 into delta d m. Okay. Here, if you want to write what are these things, this you have to write this here. This is called as cryoscopic constant. This is called as what? Cryoscopic constant or depression in freezing point constant. So this cryoscopic constant is depends upon what? Okay, depression constant and cryoscopic constant. So this unit is kg, kilo kg per mole. So this common solvents are listed in here. So this is big. depends upon what students they have. This is the number of moles of the solute. Into this cave gives what? It is also depends upon the what? The molar concentration of this solute particles present in the solution. So this is called as cryoscopic constant. So here in this delta Tf means depression in freezing point. Okay. And this M2, W2, W1, you are already known. So no need to write it again. So this is the equation, depression in freezing point. This graph is important for two months. Whatever the graph comes in this chapter, students, that is very, very important for two months. That represents the graph which shows the depression in freezing point means you have to write this graph. Okay. So this is another goal. The three colligative properties. In the next class, we will discuss about another important colligative property that is osmotic pressure. For tomorrow's class, so students, the theory part will be complete. And the next class, we will discuss some numericals and these colligative properties. As I told you, they are important for three months. And they will be important. Please note down the formulas. Okay. For First one, relative lowering of vapor pressure. P. First property, relative lowering of vapor pressure. For this, P1 naught minus P1 divided by P1 naught is equal to W2 into M1 divided by W1 into M2. Okay. Second one, elevation in boiling point. For elevation in boiling point, Delta Tb is equal to Kb W2 into 1000 divided by W1 into M2. Next, depression in freezing point. So, Delta Tf is equal to Kf into W2 into 1000 divided by W1 into M2. So, these are important formulas. Please note on these formulas. So in the next class, I will explain asthma depression. Later on, we will discuss some human things. Thank you.